In this video, we are going to show you how easy it is to set up a hybrid multi-cloud hammer space using existing data and storage assets. We are going to show you how to protect data using snapshots that are offloaded from primary storage and into the cloud. Furthermore, we are going to show you how data moving into object storage and the cloud is automatically classified, leveraging both integrated and native cloud services. Finally, we are going to show you how easy it is to set up a global namespace that can be used immediately between the cloud and on-premises. It sounds like a tall order for a few minutes, so let's get started right away. With Hammerspace installed, we will now configure the environment. Start by going into the Storage Systems tab to add existing storage to Hammerspace. We have built-in support for numerous storage vendors, as you can see from the drop-down list. Adding storage to Hammerspace doesn't change anything at all on the originating storage system and is completely non-disruptive to existing environments. Hammerspace is even capable of assimilating data from a snapshot. Now that we have added the storage systems, we need to add the volumes from those storage systems. Here you can see I have two volumes managed using a Hammerspace data services node. These are added as brand new volumes. These are managed on-premises by a Hammerspace DSX data services virtual machine but when in the cloud, they are deployed as instances. And you can use any block storage attached to these. For example, in Amazon AWS, it's a very handy and easy method to add EBS capacity into your infrastructure. DSX nodes can dynamically be added and removed from configurations quickly in order to handle growing and shrinking working sets. When we add volumes into the system, Hammerspace automatically benchmarks them. Now that we have successfully added two storage volumes from the storage system, we will add an object storage destination from an S3 bucket. We are now going to add the object storage volume to Hammerspace. Here I have one that's labeled Bucket 1 that I am adding into the configuration. This gets added quickly and as a background process. While this volume gets added into the system, we are going to go ahead and add in existing data that I happen to have on this Isilon system. Hammerspace automatically detects information about the data on the volume. And in this workflow, we are going to choose to do a read-only assimilation. This means that from a data source perspective, we are going to make sure that this information will not be modified at all, even though we will present the data to the user as read-write in the namespace. So if a user writes to the data, we automatically initiate mobility and copy it out of its read-only source location to a regular NFS volume in our namespace. Here, I am putting the data from the existing share under a new path. This path can be anywhere in the global namespace. I happen to have a share called images, this is where I am grafting in the existing data from the Isilon. Remember, this is a metadata-only operation. We are not actually moving any data, but simply taking an existing directory structure into our namespace. While we were talking, the AWS bucket was added to the system, and we have now two read-write volumes available. Now, as we browse through the namespace, you can see that the assimilation process was instantaneous. Assimilation occurs automatically as a background process, as well as on-demand. And now all the information that was on that share is now available and accessible in the global namespace. You can see that we have images and documents, and we offer a file browser to navigate the namespace and see additional information about the data. In this case, we can validate the location of data. We are now going to create a snapshot schedule, which is as easy as clicking the snapshot icon. Let's say that I want to do the snapshots hourly, and I want to keep them forever. In addition, because I'm impatient, and I don't want to wait for the hourly snapshot schedule to get to the hour mark, I am also going to create a snapshot immediately. Snapshots are metadata-driven operations, and they are instantaneous in nature. As I navigate into the share and I look into the dot snapshot directory, I will see the snapshot that I just created. The same thing can be seen if I go to the command line. It is also easy to view how many versions of this file exist in the namespace. Here I can see that there are two versions of the file. One version is the original file, and the other is the snapshot that we just took a moment ago. As you take more snapshots, you will end up with more versions of the file from a namespace perspective. It is important to note that these do not take any space unless the file has been modified. Now I will add an objective that will keep active data, data that only exists in the namespace and not on a snapshot on the local storage where it originated. What I also want to do is to add an objective to keep data that only exists on snapshots and move that into AWS S3 object storage, and I'm going to direct any data older than one hour to be placed there. Here you can see how easy it is to create rules for the global namespace. All these objectives can be applied on individual files or directories. Here we will show you how to add additional metadata to files. 
Let's navigate to the directory where we keep some image files and take one of these files to analyze with the AWS Recognition Content Analytics service to identify the content of the image. I will write an easy objective to process the frog file, which will send the image to the AWS API in the cloud, and then wait a moment to get the results back. We can now look and see the metadata tags assigned to the frog by AWS Recognition. As you can see, it's a certain type of tree frog identified by a series of relevant metadata with a level of confidence assigned. This metadata was entirely generated by AWS using their Recognition API. This approach can be adapted to many different types of services. Hammerspace can also look at MIME type information, which in this case can tell us that this file is a picture, and specifically a JPEG. We can do the same thing with another sample file and identify it as a PDF by viewing the metadata. We have this share that has files and directories, assimilated from existing storage systems from several different vendors. That by itself is a unique proposition. Some would call that a global namespace. However, Hammerspace takes it further. What we want to do is extend this namespace into the cloud, AWS as an example. In this configuration, we are treating AWS as the second site. What we see here is that we only have one specific location of the current share itself. This means that replication is not turned on. We are going to create an additional destination for the site, and every five seconds, we will replicate the namespace's metadata bidirectionally to and from the second site. Data placement and transfer between sites is orchestrated by on-demand access or by data policies. And remember, we represent a unified geo-spanning namespace, which means that we are not forcefully creating additional copies. Here we add AWS as a second site to our environment. We take this share called images and use default login credentials. What will happen over the next 10 seconds is that this replication linkage is set up and we now have a share that spans across sites. If we look at the share again, we can see that in addition to the local server, there's now also a remote destination. Note that Hammerspace can support up to 16 destinations and that data is managed at file level granularity so that only the data you access is transferred or more data can be transferred proactively by policy. We will now go log into the AWS site to validate that the metadata was successfully replicated. Here we see the share with the data and the metadata and if we check on the original site, we can see the same files in the same structure. In summary, creating a multi-site global namespace is straightforward and easy. Data is orchestrated using easy-to-use policies. Within minutes, we are literally up and running between legacy on-prem infrastructure and the cloud.